welcome to Bake Off, where we remind you it's worth the wait. <laughs> I'm your host, Chef Corey, and joining me today are our guest chefs, Chef Vincent and Chef Emily. Today in our competition, we are making the classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Our chefs have all of these ingredients they can choose from. However, they only have 45 seconds to complete their masterpiece. Remember, you'll be judged on creativity, presentation, and taste. Are we ready for our competition? Yes, sir. Yes. Chefs, I begin. Vincent wastes no time getting his sandwich together, but his decisions seem a little rushed. He may need to exercise a little more patience. Emily seems cool and calm as she executes her vision. She patiently waits for ingredients and with pause and purpose, she curates her take on the classic PB&J. And that's time, step away from your stations. Chefs, I see we have some very interesting recipes here. Let's take a look first at Chef Emily's. Well, thank you. Um, so today, I have a deconstructed peanut butter jelly sandwich. Mm. I added the perfect proportions of jelly and peanut butter. And even this side, if your friends do not like crust, they can eat the uncrustable man. Or if you are more of a crust type of gal like me, you can eat the crusted peanut butter jelly. Well, what a well thought out and perfectly planned execution on that sandwich. Thank you. Now we come to, oh, now we come to Chef Vincent's wonderful creation. Uh, Chef Vincent, tell us a little bit about your peanut butter jelly. You see, there were so many different options. I really wanted to grab different kinds to get different textures and different tastes. You see, I got the chips for the salty, got some syrup and sprinkles for sweet, just a sweet, salty kind of taste, you know? I was feeling pretty confident, and then the time started running out and I started panicking, but I mean, I'm pretty happy with what I got. I'll say, Vincent, you could use our life app for this month. Patience, patience is waiting on God's perfect timing. Just like you need to wait to put the peanut butter on the correct side of the bread. Isn't that right, Chef Emily? Right, and the Bible tells us in Psalms 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart, and wait for the Lord. Now, let's see about taste. Exquisite. <laughs> I know you like it. Bro, go. <laughs> Bro, come on now. <laughs> I'm Lawson and I cannot wait to share the story I've got for you today. Actually, I can wait. That's the whole point. And you can wait too. Um, Lawson? Lawson! Patience, Mom! <laughs> Mother. <laughs> Ma'am. Anyway, so I heard this story from my cousin Tara, who teaches fifth grade. And she showed her class a picture of a dog she rescued from the dog shelter. Oh, look at him, what a face! He's just a cute dog! He's a good dog! He's a good puppy! He's a good dog! Anyhow, Rashida, a student in her class, told my cousin she was inspired to rescue a dog too. So when she gets home, she begs her parents to rescue a dog. Please, 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 please! And she adds, I'll never ask for anything again, ever. And amazingly, Rashida's parents agree. But mom says, only if you take care of it yourself. And Rashida's so excited, she does a happy dance. And she chases her tail like a puppy. But there's one tiny catch. They told her, she had to wait an entire month to adopt the dog. And Rashida's like, I can wait, no problem. But by one week in, Rashida's like, can we get my dog earlier? I hate 
waiting. This is no fair. And she throws a tantrum. Like a toddler. <laughs> Mom's finally had enough. She puts her foot down. Hard. Mom tells Rashida they need to make a list of things to do. While you wait. And Rashida discovers all sorts of things to work on. She makes healthy dog treats and tests them herself. She practices how to train a dog. Sit, stay, good dog. She plans out the best route to take her dog for walks on. And she warns the neighbors, there might be a little barking at first. And by the time Rashida's setting up a tiny dog bed, she discovers Three weeks have flown by and it's the day to get her dog. And they all live happily ever after. Mostly. So kids, never cuddle a brand new dog without a change of clothes handy. But do remember that patience is waiting until later for what you want now. And I'll see you guys later. I guess I cut. <laughs> cut. Whew. <laughs> All right. Do we have any snacks? Hey, everyone. Today we have a great story from the Bible about a guy named Simeon. Now, there are lots of people in the Bible who are known for different things. Well, like David, who's known for defeating a giant and being a great king. Oh, oh, or there's Esther, who's famous for being brave and saving her people. But Simeon is known for something else. He's known for waiting. And waiting. And you guessed it, waiting. Simeon lived in Jerusalem, and we know from the book of Luke that he was righteous and devout. That means he followed God's laws and lived the way God wanted him to live. Simeon knew the scriptures really well. He knew that God had promised to send a savior. He was probably familiar with words like these from Isaiah 9-2. Here's what it says. Isaiah 9-2 says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. What light will it Simeon was waiting patiently for this promise of God to come true. He believed that the great light coming was the savior of the world, the one who would rescue God's people forever. In fact, the Holy Spirit told Simeon that he would not die before he had seen the promised Savior. You will not die before you see the Lord's Messiah. Me? With my own eyes? Thank you, Lord. We don't know how long Simeon waited, but it could have been years. Today, Lord? Years and years. Will it be this year, Lord? Years and years and years that Simeon could have waited. How about this decade? We have no idea how long Simeon waited, but one day the Holy Spirit led Simeon to the temple courtyard. Just then, a young couple entered carrying their baby boy. I'm sure you guys can guess who that was. Right, it was Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. As was the custom back then, parents would bring their babies and present them to the temple. And so, according to the law God had given his people, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. They had come to present him to God and to offer a sacrifice. The law says we must offer a sacrifice of two pigeons. Or doves. How is he six weeks old already? We're not exactly sure how, but somehow the Spirit of God allowed Simeon to recognize Jesus as the Savior who he and all of God's people had been waiting for. He was so excited that he took baby Jesus in his arms and he praised God. Simeon said this, Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. 
That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. You see, God had kept his word that Simeon would see the Savior before he died. After what was probably a lifetime of waiting, Simeon was overjoyed to see God's promise come true. Before he left, Simeon made sure to bless both Mary and Joseph, and he said this to them. Luke 2, 34, 35. This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be the spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Simeon knew that Mary and Joseph would experience great joy as the parents of the Son of God, but that they would also face some pretty big challenges too. Simeon trusted that God would keep his promises. Simeon studied God's, God's word and had a relationship with God, and because of that was comforted by the Holy Spirit through his period of waiting. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, did you know that the Holy Spirit is a gift to everyone who believes in Jesus and puts their faith in him? When you admit that you're a sinner and that you're in need of Jesus to be your savior, that moment you accept him as Lord over your life, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And just like that, the Holy Spirit was with Simon and he can be with you. Okay, okay. So I know some of you are probably wondering, how exactly does the Holy Spirit work? Well, it's a lot like chocolate milk. Okay, so I have some here. Look here. This here is just a regular old glass of milk. Now, if I put chocolate syrup in it, what happens? Really nothing. The syrup just goes down to the bottom. And if I taste it, it still tastes like milk. But if I take this spoon and if I stir this chocolate syrup up, the chocolate starts to permeate and it changes and it takes over the milk. And if I taste it now, mm, it's chocolate milk because you see the syrup has totally influenced the milk. The milk is now under the direction and influence of the chocolate syrup. That's the same as living by and with the Holy Spirit. When we take time to study God's word, to talk to him and to pray to him, his spirit begins to stir in our hearts and lives. And God, through his Holy Spirit, talks to us. He comforts us in our times of waiting. His spirit works and moves in us and through us, just like the syrup changed the, the milk. If you have ever put your trust in Jesus Christ as savior of your life, if you don't know if you have, but you want to do that today, to ask Jesus to be your savior, we here at Prestonwood Kids want to talk to you and celebrate that with you. Contact us at Prestonwood Kids so that we can talk to you and celebrate with you. If you think about it, this past year has been difficult for all of us. We've had to change the way we live because of this pandemic. We've wanted things to go back to normal. And there were times when it seemed like that might never happen. But as followers of Christ and filled by his spirit, we know that God has been with us. And through all of this, he never left our side. And he's here right now. He's always there to help us and to give us strength when we have to wait. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. And remember that we are meeting in person at all of our locations. And we would love to see you guys on Sunday mornings at 9.30 or 11 or at our Espanol campuses. We've got some incredible things planned for this month. So make sure that you guys keep checking back on our social media sites. Until next time, 